Hello and welcome. My name is Bennett Sticker from the Department of Pulmonary Medicine at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. I'm really glad you have found our video where we discuss our latest review article entitled Decoding the Genetic and Epigenetic Basis of Asthma. In our review, we discuss the genetic factors that might predispose an individual to develop asthma, as found in genome-wide association studies. And we take a look at the environmental factors that might predispose an individual to develop asthma, as found in epigenome-wide association studies. And we take a look at their relationship. We try to find overlapping features, as well as unique features, that might have a biological relevance to asthma. However, this can be quite challenging. For example, when we take a look at the genetics of asthma, we can see that there are over 3,000 different SNPs associated to asthma risk. And taking linkage disequilibrium into account, this number increases to over 17,000 different SNPs. In addition, there are more than 13,000 CPGs associated to asthma. So it's quite easy to get lost in this big data set. Now we know that the vast majority of asthma-associated SNPs reside in non-coding regions of the genome, meaning that they do not reside in axonic regions that code for protein, but rather in intronic regions or intergenic regions. And this makes it very likely that these variants reside in so-called gene regulatory elements, like enhancers or promoters, which are parts of the genome that have the capacity to regulate the way a gene is expressed. And in our review, we provide you with a framework that you can use to refine your initially big data set to a smaller and more biologically relevant data set of SNPs or CPGs. And we do that by using the power of epigenomics. So in conclusion, our review gives you a comprehensive overview of asthma pathophysiology. It discusses asthma and GWAS and EWAS results and the relationship it provides a framework for refinement for GWAS or EWAS results based on epigenomics. And of course, it discusses the future directions of the field. So I would uh, encourage you to read our article and I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you.